Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. My name is Richard Ross. I'm your instructor. This is one for the advanced Access users, the ones who are doing some VBA programming. So no complaints from the beginners that this is over your head. Sometimes people complain, but I'm telling you up front, hey, this one is for the advanced people, okay? In this video, we're going to talk about early versus late binding in your Microsoft Access VBA. Today's question comes from Bradley in Garland City, Arkansas, one of my Platinum members. Bradley says, I use the code in your send email from Access using Outlook video, and it works great on my PC, but a few people in the office get error messages. Could it be because they have different versions of Office installed? Well, yes, Bradley, that's definitely possible. In fact, that's one of the problems with having different versions of Office in your office, right? Someone's got Office 2019, someone else has 2013, someone else has 2007. I always recommend to my clients, if you've got a multi-user setup, try to get the same version of Office on all the machines because stuff like this happens. But I might have a good fix for you. We might be able to fix it by using late binding in our VBA. Let me explain what I mean. Okay, first up, there are two prerequisites for this video. This is a more advanced video. This goes out to everybody who knows how to do a little VBA. If you don't know VBA, go watch my intro to VBA video. It's a free video. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. Also, go watch my send email video. I show you how to send email from Access using Microsoft Outlook. Okay, so here I am in a copy of the database that we built in the send email video. Okay, and when we put in our Outlook stuff, all right, we had to go up to Tools, References, and add a reference to the Microsoft Outlook 16 object library. This is called early binding. In other words, we're specifically telling Access we're going to use stuff from this Outlook library, okay? Now, the problem is if you've got people using different versions of Office, they're not going to have the Outlook 16 object library. They might still have an Outlook library, but it might be Outlook 11 or Outlook 8 or some older version, okay? In which case, that reference won't work, but we might be able to get around it by not using this. All right, let me show you how we can get around this. Before we do, let's talk a little bit about early versus late binding. It's also called static or dynamic binding. You might hear it called that. What is binding? Well, binding is basically matching the function calls that you're going to use with the actual code that's written by the programmer at Microsoft. Okay, for example, he's got a mail item, right? And some of the objects for mail item might include sending the mail, specifying the recipient, specifying the body and the subject. Okay, so you have to match up your calls in your VB when you're typing, right? Your parameters with what the object library is expecting. Just like here with do command open form, right? This is the first parameter. Open form is expecting that. So if we're going to use the Outlook library, then we need to know what order to accept our parameters in, what some of the constants are, that kind of stuff. So it's basically matching up your function calls with what the programmer programmed the functions to be. Now, early binding happens at compile time. Okay, when... Access looks at all your code and compiles it in the machine language, right? It can check all the references and make sure you got all your variables spelled right, that kind of stuff. Whereas late binding happens at runtime. It doesn't do any pre-compiling stuff. Late binding just accepts the fact that you know what you're doing, all right? It doesn't try to help you out at all. Early binding is supposed to be faster but in reality, maybe just a teeny tiny bit, on, on the newer computers, you can barely notice it. Yeah, on some old, you know, 10-year-old machines, it might have been a big deal, but now it's, it's, I can barely notice a difference. Now, one of the benefits of early binding, by setting up that reference, right, that's early binding, is you get IntelliSense, and you get the object library references. So when you type in something in your code like that, right, the little M dot, that's the mail item, it gives you all the properties and the methods and the stuff you can use with that object, okay? With late binding, you don't get any of that. So you have to know what to type in. Early binding also gives you friendly constants you can use, like OL mail item. That's a constant that's stored in that library. Otherwise, you have to know what the number of that constant is. You might have to send like a number one, I think, is OL mail item. So you have to look those up. I'll show you how in a minute. 
Early binding also gives you compile errors. If you go up to debug compile, it'll say, hey, I don't know what that is. I intentionally spelled that wrong there. I put WTML instead of HTML, and you can see it threw up a compile error. If you use late binding, you don't get that. You just won't know why your code isn't working, right? You'll, you'll click on run, and bruh, I don't know what's going on, right? It won't tell you that you spelled that wrong. It just won't work. Or you'll get some other kind of crazy weird error. But the benefit of late binding is that it doesn't require references to other library files, so it offers greater compatibility with other users. If you got different people using different versions of Office, okay, as long as the access is compatible, like you can't go back to like Access 2003, it's a different file format. But you could have, you know, one person running Access 2010 and one person running Access 2019 and different versions of Outlook, but with late binding, you, you could probably still use the Outlook libraries. I haven't, I haven't tested it with 2010, but, it, but with 2013, 16, and 19, you can share those different object libraries. So what's my advice? What should you use? Well, for development, I recommend using early binding. So you get IntelliSense and compile errors if you're working on a big project, right? Start off with early binding, make those references to your machine, okay? But then later on, when you're getting ready to distribute it to other people, then you might want to switch stuff over to late binding because then you get rid of the need to have those external references, okay? Let me show you how to take the Outlook mail database and switch it over from early to late binding. It's not that hard, but you got to know what you're doing. So I'm going to show you so you know what you're doing, right? Here we go. Okay, here I am in the Tech Hub free template again. Uh, this is the version of the database that I made with the... Uh, with the extended cut. So it's got some extra stuff in it, but I'm gonna show you a scaled down version. So in the customer form, we got our send statement balance email, right? Click on that. And then let's see, there it goes. Outlook pops up, there's your stuff. And then you just hit send. Okay, now save changes no. Let's go into the code, design view, and right click, build event. Now in here we made it, in, with the extended cut, I made send email a function. So we're just going to rem that out and we'll put the code right in here like we did in the regular tech help video. Okay, there's a scaled down version of the code that we had from the other tech help video, right? We've got dim O as an Outlook application and Access knows what that means, just like it knows what an Outlook mail item is. How does it know? Even though this isn't part of Access, it knows because of tools, references, this guy. That's early binding, okay? So when I say set M equals O dot create item, OL mail item, Access knows what to do, okay? Then with M, set the body format, set the HTML body, equal the message, the to, the subject, display it, and then kill everything else. Let's make sure it still works. And there it goes. All right, so everything's working fine. Now, the problem is, again, if you got other people in your office who don't have the same version of Outlook, this ain't gonna work. And you can see the IntelliSense right here, like M dot, and there's all the stuff you can do, right, with an Outlook mail item. Okay, but we're going to turn that off now. Let's go tools, references. Let's uncheck that box and hit okay. Now, sometimes you got to stop and restart the database, you know, but let's see if it works. Okay, good. All right, see, compile error, user defined type not defined. Now, since I got rid of the reference, Access has no clue what an Outlook application is. So here's what we're going to do. Instead of dimming O as an Outlook application, we're just, we're just going to say dim O as an object. And I'm going to put a rem there so you know that's the Outlook application. All right? O as an object. What's an object? I don't know. It's like a generic uh, carry-all kind of, you could put anything you want in there. Okay? And I'm not going to worry about it at compile time, but when this thing runs, it better work. Okay? Now, what I like to do is I like to just run debug compile again and have it tell me what the next thing it doesn't know is right okay so outlook mail item what are we gonna do with that well we're gonna dim that as an object as well okay so now i got two random objects now we got to know what to set them to okay because again debug compile access has no clue what a new outlook application is so now we're gonna say create object outlook dot application 
Okay, just like that. We're going to create an object called Outlook Application. Okay, now here's where it gets a little tricky. This is a constant that is in that library. So if I debug compile now, it gets down to here. Now, this constant isn't known by access. It's in that library. So we have to figure out what that constant is. Now, here's a really easy trick. All you have to do is Google this with value after it. So it's OL mail item and then value. So copy that to your clipboard and let's flip over to our browser. And I'm just gonna type in that and then value. And a reference should come up. OL mail item constant value is zero. I actually like Google's better. Let's go to Google. You'd think that Microsoft would have the better one because this is a Microsoft thing. Value. Yeah, this comes up on Google. Google's got a better thing, right? OL item type, right? OL mail item is zero. Okay. So all we do now is flip back over to our code and replace this with a zero. But I want to keep that there. Let's 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 put this here and then we'll put maybe that after a, a rem so we know what it is. OL mail item. Okay. All right, what's next? What's next? Debug, compile. Okay. OL format HTML. So that's a constant we need to find the value for it. So copy that. Come back over to your browser window and we're going to say Google tell me what this is, please. Okay, that's a two. OL body format, right? OL format HTML is a two. Plain text is a one, rich text is a three, and unspecified is a zero, so we want the two. So again, back to my code, and I'll put a two in front of that. And save it. All right, debug compile again. Okay, now it's finding all my other stuff that I put in a global module for the, the members when I made that, uh, that send email function. So unfortunately, I have to delete all of this. Um, otherwise, it won't be able to compile. Okay, so I deleted all that stuff and I deleted any other references in this database to that send email function. So let's debug compile again. And we're good. So now we should be able to run it. Come back out here, close that, close. Whoop, nope, nope, close that. Save changes, yes, okay. Ready, here we go. And there it goes. It's working now with late binding. All right, save changes now. So if I come in here, all right, there's all the code with just generic references to objects, create object, okay, create item you can use. We had to replace the constants, okay? But now you can distribute this to anybody as long as they've got a version of Access that will run this, the version of Outlook that they have doesn't matter, okay? As long as they have some version of Office that knows Outlook.application, they're good to go. And that goes back pretty old. Okay, so Bradley, I hope that answers your question. Members, sorry, there is no extended cut for this video. I just couldn't think of anything extra to do except maybe run through another example of the same thing, but... If you guys really want to see more of this stuff, let me know. Maybe I'll do another video on it in the future. Uh, I will put the updated database in the downloads for the gold members if you guys want to grab the new code. If not, I uh, hope you learned something, and we'll see you soon. Oh, and remember that uh, members do get access to all the other Extended Cut videos too, not just the ones for each video. You get all of them. There's like 200 of them now, so including the Extended Cut video for the previous email video. All right. All right. We'll see you again. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. 
Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free Access Beginner Level 1 course, more of my Tech Help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.